Welcome back, and today we're gonna to take a look at my favorite browser, which is Photo Mechanic 6. I am gonna go over every little aspect of Photo Mechanic 6, and we're gonna do this in two different ways. I'm gonna do some short videos where I go over a single aspect, and then at the end, I'm gonna combine all those videos together and make one giant long ultimate guide to Photo Mechanic 6. So if you prefer to watch little short videos, you can watch the little short videos. If you prefer to watch one big giant long video, you can watch the one big long giant video. The first thing we're gonna take a look at inside Photo Mechanic 6 are the preferences. The preferences are actually important to set up. And the reason why is if you want to change the way it looks or works or is optimized, you need to go inside through here and take a look and see how things are set up. Now, I will tell you, 99% of what I have in here is default. I don't even really read over a lot of this stuff. There's just a few simple things that I want to change. It really depends on how you want to work. If at any time you wanna see what my settings are, feel free to stop the video and just kind of take a look and see what I have. I will tell you where I've changed stuff. The first thing here, which is important, are these color classes. This is how you call or tag your images. So as you're going through your images and you want to select something because you like it, if you hit the number one, it's gonna label that with a pink color, which is winner. If you wanna change any of these colors, it's very easy, just double click it. Pick yourself a new color, drag it up into here, and then you'll have a new color. I'm not gonna change any of those colors. Just like the color, you can change the text. So if you wanna change it from to select instead of winner, you can change it to select instead of winner. Personally, I don't pay any attention to the words. Doesn't matter to me, doesn't matter what they said. We have eight classes set up right here. And if you hit zero, it will remove the colors from them. And I'll talk about that later on as we go. The next one we have is the contact sheet. I have everything in here basically as default, though I might have selected combine raw and JPEG into a single thumbnail. Files, so here is how I have this set up. If you wanna take, take a look at it or change anything, you can come in here to this window. So launching, I'm obviously using Adobe Photoshop. So you wanna choose that program when you first get it. That will allow you, when you pick an image, you can hit the letter Command E and that will automatically launch that file into Adobe Photoshop. So any of the thing you wanna do, and if you wanna have an application for movies, I don't really use this, you could easily select one and then send that over. Next window we have is for IPTC data. This is for information on changing anything in those fields. We have preview, cache, render, and color management. I have mine set to Adobe 98. That is the color profile that I use. I suggest that you do use color management, calibrate your computer. It's gonna make your life easier. GPS data, never have used it, never probably will. And the last thing is accessibility. And those are my preference settings. If you have any comments or questions on preferences, feel free to comment below and I will answer them as you post. The next thing we need to do is bring up our ingest dialog box. What the ingest dialog box, or if you wanna not think of it as ingest, you can think of it as import. There's two ways in which this works. Right now I have my compact flash card inserted into my card reader. If you were to just take your SD or compact flash card right now and insert it, this window will automatically pop up. However, since I have mine in, I need to manually bring it up. The quick key to do this is gonna be Command or Control G. So in this case, I'm on a Mac, we'll come up here, we can see the ingest function. Command G is there, and it's gonna bring up the ingest dialog window. So the first thing that we have in here is the different paths or sources from which we can ingest. I am ingesting from a disc, which is a compact flash card. You can also, which is new in Photo Mechanic 6, 
ingest from a folder or from a selection. I will go over these two other options, but for right now, we're just gonna work from disk. Now the disk I have selected is my compact flash card, which is right here, so I need to select that. Down here, the next section we have is source directory structure. This is gonna be so the computer knows what you want it to do. Ignore, copy all photos into the same destination is what I have selected. What this means is a lot of times people will have that they want to create a new folder each time they take photos. And this is done on your camera. So if I took photos for five different days, it would create five different folders and put those images in that. I don't work like that. Basically I shoot something and then I come in here and I download the images. And I want all of my images into one giant folder because I don't wanna to have to navigate through 25 different layers of folders till I find what I'm looking for. I have that section here, but you do have the option of doing this differently and those are both located below and you can read those and change them if you would like. The next is copy photos. And I'm telling the computer, yes, I want to copy into a folder with a name. That's what I've selected. If you want to pick something different, feel free to pick whatever you want and pick something different. So the next thing down here is folder name. So this is an association with this. And you'll notice I have job name and today in brackets. This is called a variable. So down here we have something called variables. And if I select this, it brings up my variables box. There are millions of different variables that you can use. You just need to kind of scroll through and anything that you would want to add, you can add here. What this is doing is automating a process for me. So every time I don't have to type the same thing into multiple locations, we will get into a second what job name means, but job name is basically my slug. So whatever my photos are about. So if I took a picture of my dog, Jack, and my, ja my job name was Jack, it would put the word Jack into this location where it says job name. And then today means the date. I can show you how those fill in. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. And I need to go down here to job name, if I can find it. All right, here is job name. Right here, we can see job name or job. If I double click that, it fills in job name. And that's how you put a variable into a field. And you can put any one of these in here in as many as you want. So the next thing I have was date. So we'll come up here and look for today. This is date. So I want to do today. I'll double click that and it's going to add today's date. You can see over here, I've used variables as well. And in this case, I've done the job name in the sequence. So this is the sequence. It's going to label this, whatever I call it, which in this case is going to be called photo mechanic. And then it's going to be photo mechanic one, two, three, four, five. And that's how my photos are going to be labeled as they ingest to the program. If you want to use the same sequence inside your folder, you can click this and notice it's going to make a variable that does that. We're not going to use that. I don't use it. The next is primary destination path which is gonna be this location, and your primary destination path is located up here. What you would do is select where you want the photos to go. In my case, it's an SSD. What's really cool is you can click this and make a secondary location. It will actually ingest these photos into two completely different locations at the same time. What this allows you to do is keep a backup. So if this disk was to die, you would have a secondary location where the photos exist and you would be able to get them. I don't do that. I just drag and drop into some specific locations, but I definitely back up my photos multiple times. Right here is your job name. So the job name that we see right here and right here is in this new window. And this allows you to fill in information about your client and yourself that will be added to the photos. So my client is photo mechanic and this is their information. This is my information and it is located there. If you wanna save any of this information, you can go ahead and click on either one of these arrows or lightning bolts. These lightning bolts will allow you to save clients or users and or pick one that you've already saved. So if I had Adobe Photoshop as a client, I could click on this, 
click on Adobe Photoshop and it would fill in all their information. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want you to see my real clients' names and information. All right, the next section in here is filter files. So we are going to copy locked and unlock photos. If you are tagging or locking images that you like on your camera so they can't be deleted, it's gonna copy both files. You can select this on how you want it to do. If you want it to just copy lock photos only, you can do that. Or if you want it to only copy unlock photos, you can do it that way. Right here, I have it selected to copy raw and non-raw photos. Just like that, you can have it select raw only or non-raw only, but I'm having it do both. We'll come back to this in just a second. So this is my job name. So this is how it's gonna rename the files. Basically, when you take photos, a lot of times, it's just kind of like a weird number or code that doesn't mean anything. I want my files because of searchability to actually have a name. So if I took pictures of a chicken, I could put chicken in here. So at least I know the pictures were of chickens and then they would sequence. Right here, I want to open the contact sheet during ingest. I can have it so open contact sheet after ingest or never open contact sheet. The reason I do this is, and this is my favorite thing about Photo Mechanic is, as soon as you start to import, you can actually start working. So basically in a lot of programs, they have to it, like copy all the photos over and then they build previews and you have to wait for all that. No, in Photo Mechanic, basically it renders the image instantly so you can start going through and tagging your images right away. Down here, we have open contact sheets and background, erase source disk after ingest, which I think you should never ever select. Basically what this does, after you've imported this disk, it will erase all the images off this. The reason you don't wanna do that is that there's a problem at some point during the ingest and it doesn't go through correctly. Well, you've just deleted all your images, even though you probably can recover them, you don't wanna do that. So it's something that I don't actually erase the images off my SD card. I actually do it in the camera, but I don't do it until after I've done this ingest process and then I've moved the images to at least two other different locations, then I'll come back and do this. That way I know everything's safe. This one I do use on mount source disk after ingest. What that means is after you've ingested your files, it automatically dumps your card or ejects it. So you don't have to go into the program and do that manually. All right, the last thing we have here is apply metadata template to photos. Now, this is really gonna be important if you're a journalist. You will notice that most journalist applications, when they say programs that you need to know are gonna be photo mechanic. This was really designed for editorial photography. Even though now I'm doing more commercial stuff, though I do still do a lot of editorial, I still love this program. But this is field is really set up. Basically years ago, there used to be a different way to do this, but this is gonna have a lot of the Associated Press fields in it. So if you were to use Associated Press information or send data to any newspaper, a lot of the information they have is in here. It's also good for using SEO because it has those fields and those fields can automatically import into any SEO or web data program that you have. So we're gonna go ahead and click this and it's gonna bring up all this information. The first thing is the description. Right here, I can write the description or kind of a caption of what was going on. I'm not gonna go in here and do that. And then I usually have today's date. Now, you can use variables. You can see down here, there are variables. If I wanted to use a variable for the date, I could easily add a variable inside any of these fields to automatically fill this stuff out. Next, description writer, that's me. So if you want a headline, you put the headline in there. Obviously, for editorial purposes, this is important. This is a good one, keywords. So any keywords that you would wanna add for SEO, you would add into the keyword section. And you can see we have events and locations, and these are all the different fields that I have. So we have some rights images. So if you have a client, you wanna copy this stuff. These fields are good. You'd be surprised that someone finds a photo and they wanna use it. They actually will call you if you have your contact information, and you can make money just by having that stuff filled out. Plus it helps out if you ever run into copyright issues. 
So title name, object name, any of this stuff you want to fill out, it's here. You can just kind of go through it. I've taken out some of my user information just for this video, but that's available. Then you can save these or you can load them. Or if I wanted to clear this, I could just hit clear and it would erase everything. Another cool little thing that's in here is the like cities. Notice there's a little thing here. So here are some of the cities that I use a lot. You can save those cities. And if I wanted to just change to Dover, I can to Dover and it would change just like. So that's the IPTC data fields. So what this does, as you ingest your images, it's adding all this information to every single photo. So we're gonna go ahead and close that out. You wanna just make sure you fill it out. It really doesn't take that much time because basically you're just changing a few things on each photo. And then once we're done and we filled out everything, all we have to do is go ahead and hit ingest. So I'm gonna click on this and you're gonna see how fast this is going. So right now I can actually just double click this image and I can go through and start tagging my images almost instantaneously. That was just kind of a little preview window and you can see it's already done. It's picked these files. Now these are just some random files. Slug name or job name was photo mechanic and then we can see it's done at one, two, three, four, five. If you wanna see that metadata, I can click on the I and all that metadata would have been added that I put into the fields inside of that section. You also have other options as far as ingesting. You can ingest from a folder. So I have added a folder here. You would just come up here and hit add and you could do the same process from a folder or you can do this from a selection. The way this is gonna work here is I'm just gonna drag a folder over here onto Photo Mechanic. In any folder you drag over, you can just directly work from there. So I've just put it over here and then it pops up in a contact sheet just like that. And basically what we could do here is just go into Get and From Selection. And then we have all this kind of information here, same as we did before. And then I'll hit Ingest. It will ingest and add that stuff to the folder. So we come down here and you can see it has added all these images from this selection to this folder. So those are the other options as far as ingesting from folders and selections inside of Photo Mechanic. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.